Okay, as you see, we've moved back into my workshop. This is actually my messy workshop where I have my power tools and things like that, not my modeling bench. But I wanted to share with you a little bit about how I build the foreground trees. I start with, uh, these are great myrtle tips. I don't think that it necessarily has to be great myrtles. They seem to work pretty well for me. Uh, what you want to find, though, is a, is a branch or a, a twig or a part of a shrub that has a compact branching structure, as you see here. And very often these things will be a little curved. But you can see that it does have a set to it. Some of them are more extreme than others. And what I'll very often do is take something like this, and then I'll just break off this piece. Maybe I'll combine it here. Maybe I'll think that's the start of a good-looking tree. I'll trim off these pieces along here just to get them out of the way and make it look more natural. Maybe I'll even go as far as to taking another large branch and joining the two together and do the same thing. And I kind of let the, the branches take a natural joint right at some point along here. Uh, once I find that joint, I'll super glue the branch together at that base part, and then I'll put it aside to dry overnight. But it still at that point looks like a, a couple of twigs that have stuck together. And very often what I'll do then is start to fill the base of the trunk down here and just thicken it up so it looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more like the trunk of a tree and not a couple of twigs stuck together. Uh, for that I use, I've tried different things over the years. I've tried uh, plaster, I've tried uh, Durham water putty, but this is the stuff I've settled on. This is a particular brand is Golden Molding Paste. And if you familiar, if you are familiar with, say, matte medium or gloss medium, this is a, a very, very thick version of artist gel medium. And you just spread it on the trunk. Uh, you can spread it out with your fingers. You can use a brush. Very often, I'll use an old toothbrush just to create faint impression of, uh, of bark texture in the trunk. And again, set that aside to dry. The next step is to take uh, super tree material, and this is not super trees as far as the super tree that you just stick directly in the layout. This is the bits and pieces of the end of the super tree, or if you have a super tree branch that's exceedingly curved and isn't useful for a tree by itself, I will take it literally and, uh, and trim it out with the scissors, and then I will hot glue it to the, uh, to the armature. And while I suppose you could use a hot glue gun to try to put the, the, the little super, super tree bits on the branches, uh, it's much easier to use a glue pot. And that's what this is. This is, a, uh, this is used by, mostly by florists who do flower arranging. And this is kind of a super glue pot. I used to have an older small one that I had gotten at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that for a few dollars. This was a little bit more expensive, but I got it from uh, Amazon. What's nice is it has an on-off switch. The other one didn't have that. It was just plug it in when it turned on. Uh, and it also has a dial that you can adjust the, the heat level in the pot itself. Uh, the other thing to watch out for using a glue pot that I found is that you don't really want to melt a full glue stick in there because the glue gets stuck in the bottom and eventually you'll have so much glue in the bottom of the glue pot that you won't be able to melt all that old glue off. And you'll end up with really heavy strings from the uh, from the branches when you go to move them onto the tree. So I found this, and this is, um, essentially it's, it's a small chip version of a glue stick. And so it's just very small, very fine uh, glue stick bits. And uh, again, I got these from Amazon. Uh, this is Surebonder Skillet Stick, S-T-I-K, hot melt skillet glue. And you just drop a few of those in there turn the glue pot on, melt it, and then you go in and take your tweezers and just dip it in the end, dip the end of the branch in the glue, transfer it over to your armature and stick it on your armature. And after about 15 or 20 minutes of sticking little bits of super trees on a trunk, you'll have a tree that looks something like that. All right, so once I have the tree assembled and I've got the bark texture added to the trunk with my molding paste, I go ahead and just spray paint it with an ordinary gray spray primer. And that's uh, where this tree is. You can see the, the post on the bottom. You notice the, <laughs> the root structure is stuck on this little flange of the, uh, of the molding paste. I go ahead and just put it on the layout like this, just stick it in there with that complete, and then I just sort of texture over that. I might go ahead and 
brush paint this uh, little raised areas here to look like roots that are sticking up above the ground. Uh, kind of a neat effect, not a whole lot of extra effort. So the final step is to actually flock the tree, and for that I use a variety of uh, this super leaf material from Scenic Express. I might use some uh, fine ground foam. Very often I'll combine similar tones together as a, as a base color and then a highlight color. The highlight color really isn't to make it look like different color leaves, it's to capture the appearance of sunlight hitting the leaves and creating some highlights and shadows on the tree. It's really a very easy way to make a quite effective technique and really kind of pop your trees to life. Uh, therefore, even if you're doing green trees, summer trees, I strongly suggest you use two or three shades of green on every tree just to create that sunlit effect. I'm going to go ahead and use this plastic tray just to catch the, uh, the excess ground foam as I sprinkle it on the trees. Uh, you can use several methods to hold the, <laughs> the ground foam on the foliage on the tree. Uh, one of the easiest is just hairspray. This is ordinary extreme hold. I think you want to get extreme hold. Luckily, this is the cheapest hairspray you can find. Apparently, the more glue in it, the cheaper the hairspray is. To actually secure the foliage onto the, the armature, the tree armature, you can use several methods. Very often, I'll use diluted uh, matte medium, and I'll just kind of dip the edges of the tree in a, in a pool of matte medium and then sprinkle the foliage on top. And I'm going to hold this away from the camera and the table so I don't make everything all sticky. But the key is to spray it on from the top. I always think in terms of holding the tree top, top up. And then I just add the ground foam to it. This is actually the Scenic Express uh, orange scale leaves. I think you get the point there. But again, notice I'm holding the tree fairly upright. What I would encourage you not to do is to dunk the tree in, in a bucket of ground foam. At that point, the main advantage to using super trees is the fine branch structure, and by just dunking it in ground foam, you're kind of losing that advantage. And you have the start of a nice looking tree. Then you can add some highlight colors. And the highlight color is going to be fairly subtle. It's not going to be, you don't want to put like yellow or red on top of orange. It's going to look a little loud. But with this rust color on top of the, uh, the orange, it actually looks like there's a mixture of leaves in there and it looks like there's uh, some highlights and texture on the, on the tree that, that you can't get from just using one color. And again, notice I'm sprinkling it from the top. Then to give it one final shake and there's your finished tree. After I got done flocking these two trees here, I, I noticed the trunks were just not quite dark enough. They seemed a little light. Uh, so what I'm going to do is darken these a little bit, and that's easy enough to do. What I've got here is uh, a couple of paints. I've got grimy black, uh, railroad tie brown, and then a couple of Vallejo colors, German gray, and medium sea gray. And these are... Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I've got my brush and my cup of water. And a scrap piece of something to put the paint on and spread it out on. And although tree trunks aren't brown, even though we all learned in school, obviously in grammar school we all painted our tree trunks brown, they're not really brown. This is more to get a, a different tone to the trunk and kind of tone down the, the exceedingly light gray that it's painted right now. Uh, I'm going to start with some fairly thin paint and just brush it along the trunk. And I normally wouldn't do this for every tree, but because these are already flocked and because I'm showing you how to do them and I want to show off my best work, uh, I wanted to make sure that we got, got these toned down just a little bit. Yeah, it was frightening when I put them on the layout. I was like, oh, wow, these are way too light. How did I mess that up? And I must have grabbed the wrong color gray primer and then in my rush to videotape this whole thing, and this is probably the fourth or fifth time I videotaped this. Uh, not this step, obviously, but the other steps. Uh, I just missed out on the fact that I grabbed paint that was too light. And I never make a mistake when I'm doing a modeling project. And if you believe that, I've got a bridge in Arizona I'd like to sell you. And I'm going to try to use this other Vallejo color. Medium sea gray. 
a good navy color. That's empty right now, or stuck. Uh, I lent some of these, a selection of gray paints uh, when Paul Dulpus built the structure for me last month, which you will see at the month in the monthly update. Um, <laughs> I gave Paul every gray paint I had and he used some of them and he didn't use others and obviously he must have used that one because he gave it back to me and it's virtually empty uh, and again just kind of mix this together this is sort of a, a sloppy mess but and this one's going to be a little easier to get the color on because it doesn't have as much bald branches sticking as far up into the tree and it's all right for the tree color, the the bark color to vary as it goes up the tree, but like I said, this was just a little too light. It was just, just made everything look like it was a white birch. And this is supposed to be more like a maple tree or an oak, or even an elm tree. Actually, one of the things I was going for with this is I'm trying to figure out a way to make uh, a series of Dutch elm trees that I could line a street in one of the towns with. And that was very common back before Dutch elm disease virtually wiped out the elm trees, but they used to be uh, very commonly used in U.S. cities and towns as shade trees. Now when that dries, we'll take a look at it, and maybe we'll put it on the layout and show you how it looks. I'm going to get kind of close with this one. I don't know if you can see this well, but the wash of the darker color, the railroad tie brown and the grimy black, really brought out the uh, the bark technique. So uh, using this technique, you can make a half dozen or so foreground trees for your layout in about the time it takes to watch a, a football game.